Now, this year's Hilton Arts Festival promises to be out of this world. One of the highlights will be the takes on Elizabeth Clara's story and book Beyond the Light Barrier. The South African meteorologist was one of the first people to describe a sexual alien encounter. She claimed she lived with her extra, uh, extraterrestrial lover, Akon, on a planet called Metin and had a son. Now, her story is being brought to life. Paul Slabolepsi and his new one-woman play, Finding Rosetta, is about a woman named Rose who finds the book and goes on a journey of self-discovery. Meanwhile, Uga Corolini has directed a documentary film on Beyond the Light Barrier. Let's uh, get uh, some insights uh, from both of them this afternoon um, and really just how their paths uh, manage to collide. Uh, Uga, I know we've got you before we get Paul on the line, but while we wait for him to join our discussion tell us a little bit about uh, your journey on putting together the kind of story that would resonate with anyone watching and looking to evoke the kind of emotion that you put into uh, creating and uh, I suppose directing the story hi yes so um, it took me 13 years to complete this film it was quite a journey um, and the story has been with me since the age of eight when it broke in the Heisgenoot. And I remember my mum buying the Heisgenoot and me looking at these photos. And actually a really beautiful full circle moment was the journalist that wrote that article, Petrovna Metlerkam, who is now a, publis a publisher. She was actually at our Encounters Documentary Film Festival premiere and did the Q&A with us um, as a full circle moment, because she's also in the film. Um, the story of Elizabeth Clara, it's, it's, a story for, it's a story that really put South Africa on the map for a different kind of reason at the time when this very affluent woman, Elizabeth Clara, um, from Natal, who was a meteorologist herself, allegedly, had this incredible scientific knowledge. I mean, she was flown all over the world to present it. It, it held a lot of the solutions to all our problems today. And... Um, and she even presented to the House of Lords, to the UN. And the, the, the part where people sort of got very divided was every time they asked about how do you know this? She said, well, my extraterrestrial lover took me to his planet and showed me. Um, so yeah, we, we, I show you everything I have found out over 13 years all over the world. The good, the bad, the ugly, it's all there and you can decide. But there's a lot to think about, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, 13 years, one can only imagine, uh, imagine some of the challenges you would have encountered. And as you recount her story and her experience of life and her, uh, her, her uh, extraterrestrial lover, one would already start to raise an eyebrow and think, what on earth is happening here? So when you were putting this documentary together, that was probably one of the challenges is to say, this is her truth and this is the story that she has to share. Uh, what were some of the other challenges that came through out the 13 years uh, when putting this piece together? You know, that is a very good question and I don't actually think we have the time because there have been <laughs> so many to discuss all of that because you can imagine, I am saying I'm making a documentary which is non-fiction about a woman with an extraterrestrial lover who had his baby while she was a scientist. So it, it was continuous and, and funding, finance, we were scammed, you know, sifting through the crazy to get to the gems. Um, but the people who made the film, and a lot of them are scientists in their own right, you know, this is really an environmental film about a woman that was certainly ahead of her time in certain aspects. Um, and, you know, when you look at the environmental films that's out there, it's it often preaches to the already converted mm -hmm. and here we have someone that brings in ufos and aliens and men in black that goes okay believe me or not believe my story or not but houston we have a problem and the problem affects us all and we are to blame for what's happening here um and i think that that sort of the lighthouse part for all the different boats in this very stormy and interesting ocean. And 
John Carney, when he came on board, which was, can I just say, career highlight personally, um, you know, he, he had carte blanche. I literally, I showed him a rough cut. I said, John, this is the scenario. There it is. We had one day with him only. We recorded his voiceovers in the morning and the afternoon was his interview. And we had load shedding at six and our generators couldn't power the theater because we shot him in, the, in a theater because obviously that's his legacy. And, and I literally said to him, John, what do you make of all of this? And that was one of the most profound 48 minutes of all our lives. And I think for me, John sums it up perfectly. And to be able to know what that perfect is, <laughs> um, I would invite you all to the Hilton Arts Festival. And for those who can't make the Hilton Art Festival, Amazon, October, worldwide. This is one hell of a South African story. And there's a lot to take, whether or not we believe in aliens or not. Mm. Uh, Uka, I wanted to ask you about the look and the feel and, you know, the decisions you made around the direction. But we'll get to that in a moment because I understand Paul has just joined the discussion. A very good afternoon to you, Paul. We've just been speaking to Uga around uh, the documentary, uh, but you created a play called Finding Rosetta. And uh, I suppose one big question here is this is a woman with an absolutely extreme story uh, that is her truth. And she's trying to convince, uh, you know, uh, the world of what exactly it is that she is finding to be her truth. Uh, putting that play together, tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, uh, about uh, three years ago, uh, Annie uh, Robinson Greeley came to me and uh, she was working on a story with William Le Cordier of uh, Michael House College. And um, they, they could, just couldn't uh, get this uh, play together. And uh, she asked me a couple of times if I'd write the thing, and I was very busy. I said no. And then, she, then I finally said to her, "Who are you writing it about? And uh, uh, who's this person that you are so concerned about?" And she said it was Elizabeth Clara. And mm -hmm. I had a 40-year a, a appointment with Clara, and said uh, I will certainly help you with the play. And that started that journey started three, uh, even more than three years ago. So finally, we're ready for the Hilton Festival, and we're looking forward to opening. Yeah, Paul, so obviously this is uh, uh, about a woman who finds the book and is on a self-discovery kind of journey. So not exactly Elizabeth's story, but what are some of the nuances uh, that you drew on Elizabeth's story to perhaps um, um, chart uh, Rose's path as she was uh, on this path of self-discovery? Well, the, the thing is that... Uh, Rose is, is at a point in her life where she, she's, she's lost her mojo. She, she was hugely creative, got married, and then had to um, bury her creativity. And uh, it's now she's in her 60s, early 60s. Uh, the children have left home, and she and her husband have a huge fallout. And uh, she goes back to the place where she was born, in Rosetta. And while she's there, she stumbles upon the book, uh, Beyond the Light Barrier by Elizabeth Clara, and then realizes that she and her nursemaid, when she was a little girl, used to see this lady uh, in, in the streets of Rosetta. And, and so it's, it's, um, uh, it's, it's her going back on her childhood and, and, and trying to find Clara again. So it's a kind of a, it's, it's, it's following the footsteps of Clara. And I don't want to give away the play because something happens during the play that is an awakening for her. And she goes back to her creativity. So it's, it's a woman who finds herself again after living many years of burying her, burying her crea creativity. Yes, Paul, you and uh, Uga have been very secretive with some of the uh, big moments within uh, the stories that you're telling, cliffhangers they call them. We'll continue our discussion in a moment. I actually just want our viewers to get a taste of what they could look forward to. We do have a trailer uh, that would like to share with them, and then we'll continue our conversation. Take me to your leader. On your marks, get set, go. We're the only people on the planet now. Take a look. There's not another soul around. I was seven years old, 
and the sun had just set, this enormous craft came across the sky. I felt that this was the beginning of a tremendous destiny. She must have had her first intimations or contact with flying saucers because she took these photographs. Those are the first ones that were photographed in 1956. She loved to talk about her journey up into space. She had sex in the spaceship. I don't think there's any other case on record of a woman giving birth to a child from an alien. Pure and diluted love. I mean, there, there must have been a passion that we can't even imagine. That's not a good love story. It's not a good love story at all. Sounds a bit like I'd watch to me. This is Archon, who was my mother's love. It seems I have a half-brother out there in space. I do have doubts about the story. Who listens to messages? We are in trouble. Books. Interstellar trouble. Alien babies allegedly alleged. We're definitely not alone. Oh, Uga, there was so much you could have done with that, and I could see. And I, I want you to talk us through that creative process, that comic book feel that you've incorporated there. Uh, and there's so many opinions from people, people thinking it's absolute hogwash, some thinking it's an absolutely amazing uh, love story. Uh, lots of little things for you to work with, and I want us to, uh, just for you to share with us that creative process and ultimately the final documentary that we've just seen the trailer of now. Okay, and of course you saw a certain Mr. Paul Slabolevsky there, who yes. is one of the most wonderful interviewees in this film as well. And of course him and John Carney go way back as well. So it was a beautiful full circle moment. And I actually forgot what Paul says is my other big, yes, that's what it is. <laughs> but again, you have to watch the film. So you can imagine, we, we have to, you know, with a documentary, there's usually reenactments or lots of archival footage, but we had a lot of gaps, a lot of missing links in this because Archon conveniently never presented himself, never allowed himself to be filmed, right? So we as a team decided that um, and also just a homage to me and how I grew up and what inspired me as a filmmaker. Um, comic books, right? And comic books is also, of course, you know, sci-fi. And often we've seen with comic books, it becomes reality eventually. So what better way than to use that device as our reenactments? And um, we specifically used the 70s style um, comic book treatment because that's sort of when the story was in its heyday even though the 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 the, the time frame where this happened to elizabeth was in the 50s but the story broke um and when she started speaking publicly about it in the 70s and then of course the book was published in 1979 1980 90 yeah sort of 1980 81 depending on when you want to count which edition what 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 um so the biggest challenge really was we've shot this film over 13 years and they would you know we as filmmakers have grown and stylistically evolved and now we had all these different footage and archival and interviews and photos and how do you tie that together to make it coherent and that's why we decided on this treatment and the team that worked with me on this many of them have worked with me on my other films and it, it was the most fun we've ever had there was so much love in the room as we worked on this story some of us believe it some of us don't just like the people in the trailer and it really just is a testimony that at the end of the day underneath all the what what not the real message here is without sounding like such a cliche, but love, you know, whether it's it's the creatives who loved working on this, that it's, you know, aliens are sort of beside the point. We yeah. are here. Work needs to happen here. And can we just start maybe seeing each other before we start worrying about aliens? Because some of us treat each other like aliens, and I think that's really where where the work begins. Yeah, My planet is here. 
Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. My apologies for coming in there, but I, I just wanted Paul to weigh in in the is interest of time. Uh, Paul, obviously yours is kind of a one-woman uh, show that you've put together. And like I said earlier, there's so many different components to uh, the story. So how are you able, in putting the story together, and without, of course, giving anything away, able to create a wholesome piece that uh, someone sitting, watching, will be able to resonate and understand the story holistically? Yeah, look, you know, for me, it's it's um, this this finding yourself thing. You know, at a particular time of your life. You know, going going back on on your your life up to this point, and also for me, a huge uh, thing coming up now, which was something for Clara, was you know what's what's happening to our planet, you know, the environment, uh, and a lot of that is in the play as well how are we treating our planet the only mm. home that we have and i think that um, uh, rose in my play is is understanding that uh that's the thing she and, and, and she, she agrees with with clara on we really have to start looking after our planet and and raise human consciousness that's very important Mm, thank you both uh, to you for joining me this afternoon. And if anyone hates a cliffhanger like me, we'll definitely be making our way to engage both the documentary and the play. Uh, Paul Uga, thank you very much uh, for your time this afternoon. A wonderful story. Uh, and it's definitely a South African story that you'd want to engage with.